Now then, Cameron. Morning. You're like a superstar in the recruitment industry. Don't know about that, Dave. <laughs> but what people don't know. So first of all, this is Cameron McLean, and he is kind of the the marketing inbound lead generation specialist for Firefish. But whilst Firefish are an amazing tech company, you guys are dynamite at marketing and what we're going to talk about today. Now, normally you talk about tech, don't you? You normally talk about Firefish and systems and how to really engage your candidates. But today we're going to see a whole new side of Cameron. Yeah, that's it, Dave. So today I'm going to try and give as much value as possible to your solo recruiters out there that are looking to be able to get more of a return from um, uh, social selling uh, as well as um, inbound marketing and lead generation. I'm going to focus this really on actionable tips that solo recruiters can do. It's fine for companies like us that have a, an internal marketing team of really, really talented people that are, that are driving up, um, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, but what can your solo recruiters do to uh, to, to help them uh, reach more, more candidates and more clients? Exactly. More That's the name the of book. the game. I think yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? I think, and I, and, I, and I can't wait, we're going to dive deep on this, and I know you've got some good stuff, I'm pretty convinced of it. But what I think is really um, paramount is recruiters only have so many hours in the day, and like you say, we don't, they don't have a marketing team behind them. So it's about understanding how they can get the maximum coverage or the maximum awareness or the maximum exposure in the most effective way. Yeah? Yeah. And... I think what's real, I want to touch on something very quickly is, but I think a lot of people are frightened. Yeah. They're frightened of putting it out there, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, you know, they shouldn't be. Um, you, from time to time, you might get people that disagree with your views and your opinions, but that's not a bad thing. You know, being out there on social media and adding value to the market is all about creating discussions. Sometimes people agree with you, sometimes they don't. But see if you get into a discussion with someone online and they disagree, uh, disagree with you, were they ever going to buy from you anyway? Yeah, probably not. I, but so don't I, I worry think about that, that. Yeah, and I think that it's so. Yeah, we are. We obviously we are Firefish built into our platform. I'm an absolute massive advocate. I love everything about Firefish. You guys have transformed our business. It's been fantastic. But what I find, what what really happens is, so I'm in. I'm a Firefish. Okay, I wish I had. Actually, I've got a t-shirt. Actually, you have a t-shirt. Right? Yeah, I've got one. I should be wearing it. Okay, but what what it what we're trying to create what everybody should be trying to create is their own tribe okay yeah. so like you've just said there you don't want to please everybody and if they're not going to buy from you they're not going to engage with you they're not interested in what you've got to say that's okay you're not trying to please everybody and i think that's when that switch goes off where you just think right if i can find a hundred people or maybe dare i say a thousand people in my sector that will listen to me consistently because of the value that i can share that gives me a real space to really be comfortable and, and start with some of that social selling and getting my brand out and getting my my content out yeah that's it and if you think about it you know most of the solo recruiters that are listening that are tuning into this will uh, will have a network they will have connections on linkedin they will have candidates and clients on there and that's a living and breathing list of data that's always updating itself. And, you know, if it's people are active on there, then you've got a great opportunity to get in front of uh, a lot of people and get your message out there and communicate as much value as possible. Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? Because if they're in your database, for example, if you've got candidates in, you've got the name, the mobile number, the email address, at some point you've had a touch point. And if you're doing your job right, you're having frequency, frequent touch points, which is where Firefish and you guys are excel. Yeah. But, what we want to talk about, though, is the people you're not really in your data set yet. They're not in your core nucleus. They're not in those people that have had, they know you, they know your values, know where you work, they know the sector. And this, yeah. what we want to do is try and demonstrate now the easy options or the easy ways to try and pull in um, more candidates. Because we all want more leads in the most effective way, because that's what it's all about. Yep. So for me, so for me, then what we would do there is you'd want to try and almost like challenge yourself to almost have a, like a new KPI in your business uh, as a, as an individual, as a solo recruiter, make a commitment to actually um, implement a social selling process. So think about it as for us, what we do internally as a sales team, we try to leverage um, five dates or offline conversations, as we like to call them, with uh, with target clients. Now, you could do this on the client side or the candidate side as a solo recruiter. 
And the reason that we do this, because we know that if we create five new conversations a week, um, that would equate to 20 new conversations a month and 240 possible new opportunities across a year. Now, let's say you manage to convert 5% of those and they turn them into placements, that's 12 new placements over a year. Now, if you're a solo recruiter, imagine what that would do to your that bottom line if you made that, 12, recruitment, yeah. 12 more placements a year. It can transform your business. And the thing is, there's a big debate going on out there at the moment, is is recruitment sales or is it marketing? Now, depending on what camp you sit in, I've always felt that I sit in the marketing camp. We don't. I don't, I don't believe we have anything to sell, okay? We get paid indirectly for that really good piece of marketing, I suppose. Yes. Um, but so what you want is those additional conversations, because I don't think people, KPI is still a dirty word, but the reality is you've got to build this into your day, isn't it? Now, how yeah. do you do that? Does, does every, as you, your team, does everybody instructed to say the same thing or are they all aiming at different markets or different seniority? What, how are you designing that? So, well, for us as a software company, we have a, we have personas that we know. So we have different personas that we sell to and each of them would have a, a different approach. So your agency owner, for example, would, um, would require a different approach to a, a marketing a marketing person in a recruitment agency and they would also have a different approach to the financial director for example as well yeah. if you're a solo recruiter um, and you're thinking about uh, this approach in terms of you know who are you talking to for me the easiest advice to give to a solo recruiter is that you are trying to get a message out there to people inside organizations whose challenges you can overcome by finding the right well. talent I, yes, I uh -huh. yeah, 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 totally, yeah. So if you're thinking about um, producing your own content, and I'll, I'll always use work examples for this. So if you are a, a technical recruiter, for example, and you're thinking about producing content, you're not necessarily, necessarily thinking about producing it for candidates or clients. You're thinking about producing it for the person inside the organization whose challenge you're going to overcome. So for example, a chief technical officer, you might put content together about how the work that you're doing in the market with the candidates you've got access to can overcome the challenges a CTO is having. Because then what happens is, the CTO then goes to the, the recruitment person, the internal recruiter or the HR manager and says, I want to speak to them. Yeah. And you've got a way in versus, um, you know, you're opening up doors there that you might not have had open before. Yeah. By doing that. I, I talk about this all the time to, to our team here at Service the Connect. I talk about breadcrumbs, okay? And it's dropping pieces into the conversation at suitable and applicable times. Yeah. Because you cannot, I think when you move from agency life to working for yourself, it's very easy to think, right, I need to do 10 new jobs a day, 10 new uh, vacancies, and, and yeah. I need to develop. But that's a real inefficient way of using your time. What you've got to build is clients, and you've got to build uh, the relationship with those people so you can deliver. You don't overface yourself. Don't overload yourself. Yep. But what you need is that warm intro or awareness when you are completed those four, five, seven, eight jobs that you've been working on. Now you go back to your desk and you're talking to people, you're looking to engage. You need to be able to drop into that conversation or start planting those pieces of breadcrumbs until it's time to <laughs> until it's time to make a sandwich. Yeah, you know? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, mate. And like those each each of those breadcrumbs that you're talking about there, for me, they, they, they each breadcrumb represents a bit of value. Yeah. And that's the key driver of engagement when you're doing anything on social media is value, value, value. But you're now, talking engagement as well. Sorry to you're talking engagement yeah. and it's not about we see lots of linkedin content which is just jobs being posted and i would i would love to know the stats to see how many jobs get filled from those jobs that get posted it's yeah. just almost a complete waste of time for me totally. it's about the engagement isn't it yeah very much so it's about starting conversations um <clears throat> when we find a target account that we want to go after we have like a process that we follow um to go through so the first thing that we would do is we would go in and we would view the person's account there's been loads of research done into the psychology of the red dot that you get on social media when when you have a notification or an engagement yeah so the first thing that we'll do is, is we'll go and view view the person's profile they then know that they then know that we've viewed it so a day later what we'll then do is we'll go in and we'll look at a recent post or a discussion they've been involved in and we'll pitch in on the discussion then again they've got another notification that we've had there yeah. then you would go ahead and like something and then by that point by the time you've done that you've earned the right almost to ask them to connect with them so when you've sent that connection request nine times out of ten they're going to accept it 
But it's also, it's also, it's not one bam, thank you, ma'am, is it? It's no. not, right, uh, I join the conversation. I send you a connect. We're not talking in a 20-minute period here. And, oh, by no. the way, do you need do you need me to recruit for people? It's no. about it's about visibility and awareness. Yeah. But going back to what we said before, people can be frightened and they don't know where to start sometimes with content. And I kind of think you've probably got a golden nugget to help people. Yeah. Where yeah. Would they, how, because they've got to join the conversation with a piece of value. And if they're not sure where to start, maybe we can help them. Yeah, cool. So if you're a solo recruiter listening to this and you are not recording videos yet, you're not writing loads of content yet, but you want to add value into discussion, there's a couple of cool tools in the market that you can use. So one of them I would check out is called BuzzSumo. So you can go on to that. And again, I'll use technical as an example. You could go on and you could say, run a search on it for .NET development. Is what it like an aggregator of information, for example? Yeah, it's an aggregator of information and it looks at social engagement. So it's going to have a look and say, okay, across Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, news platforms, loads of, other, uh, loads of other tools where it's aggregating information. It says, this is the top shared piece of content across social media in this subject matter over the oh. past month. Yeah, go. So, yeah, so if you were to run that just now, we ra ran it on .NET development earlier on. There was one about being uh, a bit of content about being uh, having no programming experience to the journey to becoming a .NET developer. Yeah. Now, if really you're recruiting cool. that market and you share that online, it's so, so valuable, or you pitch that in a discussion, you're giving a ton of value to people in your market there. So it's an easy tool to get information yeah. from. And that's the thing, isn't it? And where, where, diving into that kind of content you are allowed you if you if you leverage it in the right way so you're just leveraging the content that somebody else has already they've already done the hard work okay yeah, yeah. let's let's just make let's just you know beg steal or borrow sometimes let's get that content out there but the but by adding your spin on it or adding your opinion or trying to pose what i find always always works is just ask a question yeah, yeah? What are your thoughts on, do you agree of this journey from the .NET developer, from, from no experience through to call? What are your thoughts? What was your experience? Did it impact you? Different stages. And yeah. that kind of small engagement with people who will watch, because they're already, you've earned the right to talk to them at some point. The exactly. new contacts hopefully come from that, and then you dip in and you grow and grow and grow. That's where, that's where, reputations are formed that's where you grow your data set and your network and your authority yeah so it's where credibility comes from when you start to get that stuff right and you're and getting involved in multiple discussions then your credibility just grows and grows and grows um, and when you're seen as a credible source and, and sort of someone who is reputable in their space then you start to carve out a real niche for yourself and you start to become the go-to person in the niche that you've chosen yeah um, it's very very powerful particular for particularly for solo recruiters you know but you 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 are the, the 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 face of the brand as it were yeah and i think to add to that though as well is it let's not overface ourselves to become the go-to recruiter what you want to become is the go-to recruiter for 12 clients for example yeah, yeah. okay and be absolutely so ingrained with them but still demonstrate the visibility because you still need the candidates from you know from all leads and all lead sources but you guys will share content Facebook, LinkedIn, email, through Crowdcast, Instagrams, all this. Suddenly it gets a little bit overfacing. You think, well, oh, I've got to be everywhere. I've got to be everywhere. And I kind of disagree with that in the beginning, that you can be omnipresent and you can be a busy fool and you can hide behind social media. You can hide behind content and then say, I'm not making any placements. I'm not generating any revenue, but I'm sharing loads of content. But are you doing it effectively? And again, when we talk about, see, you guys, the system that we're going to operate within Firefish is... You can have alerts, job alerts that come out, okay? But why why would you not repurpose that content in BuzzSumo? BuzzSumo, that's right, isn't it? In yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you not write a blog post or even an article and then email your candidates again? Yeah. And if you've, there's your weekly or fortnightly newsletter, for example, so that when it's time to post a job or you're interested in, they get an alert, for example, or then be notified or you will mail shot out to these candidates as long as we're GDPR compliant, obviously. But that to me suddenly, again, makes you more interesting and engagement mm -hmm. with your potential candidate for these roles.
Very much so. You're separating yourself out from the competition there because, again, it comes to giving value. You know, it's just all about that, Dave. You want to just make sure that you're everything, every single touch point that you have with, whether it's a client or a candidate, should contain some form of some form of value, even if it is a even if it's a follow up email to somebody that you're in contact with a week ago. Yeah. You know, you don't have to start that email with, you know, um, I ha- never heard back from you last week. Or, yeah. Can you give me an update? Instead, just start it with. Hi Dave, came across this article in the market in the market last week about stuff that's changing in your sector. Thought you might find it interesting. Here's yeah. the link. Yeah. Get that through and they go, oh, that's really valuable. Oh, I never went back to Dave last weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah last week. Oh yeah, Dave, okay, cool. Thanks for that. Oh, by the way, here's an update on this. Yeah. yeah. I, it, and this is the thing, and it, it's kind of going back to an element that you touched on earlier, is building it into your day. Now, when I was in agency life. Okay, it was calls, 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 you know, obviously interviews, jobs, all, yeah. all, the, all the stuff we all know and most people despise. But the reality is it's a good barometer by building this into what I call habits. You need habits to help yeah. you understand where you're getting the return on your time. Now, we have a thing here. We started about uh, six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. putting in 90 minutes and it's really hard you take discipline 90 minutes in the morning of marketing activity now in some instances i'm a bit of a blocker me i don't know about you so i'm I'm not somebody can do a bit today and a bit tomorrow i kind of like to want to do it all now which is never always that that, a great move but it's just the way i operate so what we try to do is say right today i'm going to go searching for x amount of articles or i'm going to prepare an email sequence or i'm going to prepare some value i'm going to look at say five um, LinkedIn posts or five status updates I may share. And I'm, consistency is the big problem for me, and we're working on that massively. Yeah, yeah. But it becomes part of our day now, our working day. And it never used to be like that. It was always relied on somebody was just going to sort a magazine out, and that was your advert, and that was – these need to be built into your day. They do, and that is something that we've implemented as well. So consistency is what drives change in a business. So if you're listening to this and you've never you've never taken this sort of approach, you know you don't have to say I'm going to dedicate four hours a day to this. That's just just not possible. You're yeah. spending a lot of plates being to clients and candidates, interviews, all that sort of stuff. But start with something like an hour a day and commit to yourself in that hour to maybe get involved in five conversations or six conversations. You know, give yourself one every ten minutes, mm. um, and then just make have a consistent um, metric in your business where you're aiming maybe to get one bit of content up on LinkedIn a day that's not about a live job that you're working. Don't start a post with urgent, no, you don't have to start a post with like urgent job, whatever it might be. There's no job that's not urgent, is there? We want no, to no, no, you're working recruitment, exactly. <laughs> so think about consistency with maybe one bit of valuable content a day and try and get involved in maybe five or six conversations. Yeah. Ask questions like you said earlier on. It's valuable. Start with that, yeah. Um, you know yeah. and and it's very easy to think i'm just busy answering i'm very busy answering things on linkedin or wherever you are but the point is that is part of your long term business development strategy and yeah. when you're a solo recruiter i think what people don't understand the, the, well maybe they do but what i would encourage them to do is is separate the difference between business development are you getting jobs on and developing their business yeah, yeah, there are two hats here, right? I need more jobs on, or I need to get a new client, or I've just completed this assignment, or whatever. I now need to look at this next phase with how am I going to make my awareness, my visibility stronger, bigger, more impactful, more powerful? And yep. it comes from those daily habits. Yeah, totally. There's a psychological principle. That, so, see if you if you were arranging. So, anyone listening to this, if you're arranging a dinner party in your house on Friday evening and you were having your friends coming round and you decided to take the Friday off work to tidy the house and get organised, it would take you the entire day to get your house ready for your guests coming round. See if you finish work at six o'clock on Friday, your guests are coming round at eight o'clock. You will have the house tidy by eight o'clock in the yeah. two-hour time slot. Tasks will take as long as the amount of time that you allocate oh. to them. So offer time and commit to that time to do it on a daily basis, and that will drive change in your business. Do you know, and it's driving change, and I think it's positive change, isn't it? I, I, there's a, there's a lady I know, and I think uh, the world of Emma Mills. She's a she's um she has a fantastic business, and she's all about being efficient with the time. And she said, treat every day, every day like you're going on holiday tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how much shit you get done on that day before you go on tomorrow. Okay? Totally. 
and by giving yourself deadlines. And I think you see, it's transformed our business. It's moved our business forward significantly. We have something now called demos, uh, demos, momos, and um, uh, wemos. No, demos, wemos, and momos. (laughs) Which is is, um, daily operation, daily objectives, weekly objectives, and monthly objectives, purely so that there are KPIs. Are we fulfilling that one conversation? Are we fulfilling that one piece of engagement? Are we following up with that email? And that's kind of the positive metrics that are gonna help the other sort of recruiters grow their business in the most effective way. But also, it's not just about LinkedIn. Yep. It's very easy to get drawn into the world of LinkedIn with all the other recruiters, because that's what everybody else is doing, but you need to focus on what matters to you. Yeah, very much so. You know, um, earlier on you spoke about spreading yourself too thin and feeling as though that you need to be everywhere. You need to be where your candidates and clients are at the end of the day. So if you're in a niche, for example, where your uh, candidates and clients spend time on Facebook, I'd be focusing on growing my network and uh, and, uh, and building my personal, my, my brand and stuff on, on that platform yeah. versus LinkedIn. There's been a big shift in a few sectors over the past years, like particularly in recruitment. So, you know, any any rec to rec solo people in here or even any any um, any sales folk, sales recruiters that are listening to this, all the discussion, all the discussion used to take place on LinkedIn and LinkedIn groups in years gone by. It's totally changed nowadays. Everyone's just shifted over onto Facebook, and it, you know it's a it's a great place in Facebook groups to be dropping value because you can go into a group with five thousand members just like that and drop a bit of content in that's really valuable. It could be full of potential candidates or clients in there. So you know, spend time where your candidates and clients are. Don't think about spreading yourself too thin if they're not on the platform. Don't dedicate any time to it. It's waste, wasted. And it's very easy. It's very easy to get drawn in what you should be doing versus spending some time looking at strategically at where you should start. So, yeah. so I mean, I'm pretty sure there are other kind of ways other than the buzz sumo. Um, and I think that's a really good starting point for those people unsure of what to do next. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, um, Buzzsum is a great thing to start off with. The other thing is that each time you come across like a valuable bit of content, if it's created by somebody else, um, think about where that came from. Have a look at the blog itself that it was shared from or the website itself it was shared from. You can then use something called Feedly. Yeah. Um, so you take that and you just pop in the uh, the blog URL and it starts to aggregate all that. So I use it. So when I come in in the morning, open up Feedly, I can see all the top all the top blogs that I follow, all the bits of content. And if I go, oh, I like that subject matter, you know, I maybe spoke to someone on a demo yesterday about that, that uh, that subject matter, I'm going to take that and I'm going to share it on LinkedIn and I might even tag them in it to say, hey, you know, we spoke about this yesterday. Um, so you can use that. And then I would think about um, like a, a repeatable process when you're trying to get those, that online engagement moved to, um, uh, moved to offline. So I could actually, I was thinking about this earlier on, I could work through an example if you want. I don't know if that yeah, would be, be valuable. Yeah, so, so let's say, for example, you've got, an, you've got a conversation going with somebody online um, who you're not connected with. Um, they've just engaged with something that you've shared. You've maybe responded to them on there. Um, what, what I would think about doing is the first thing that we would do is we would go straight to their LinkedIn, uh, straight to their LinkedIn profile. Um, and um, actually, let me just think about this. So actually, let's think about people who are trying to get into this from a different perspective. Right. Listen to this, you've never done, you've never done it before. This is real life example. Yeah. 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 So, unless we start charging for this. So let's think you've you've um, you've never done this before. You're listening to this as a solo solo recruiter, and you have just come out of a meeting with a a, a new a potential new client. Yeah. First thing I'm doing is I'm going. I'm coming out of that meeting. I'm going straight to their LinkedIn profile, and I'm personalising the invite that I'm going to send over True to client. them. To the client, right. I'm going to mention at the end of the conversation that it was great to meet them, and I'm going to get an invite sent out immediately after uh, after the after the meeting. Yeah. Um, I would, if there was anyone else involved in the meeting as well, I would be going to their profiles as well and mentioning them and inviting them into the uh, inviting them into my network as well. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to follow the channels that they have on their uh, against their company, their corporate channels as Mm -hmm. well, because I want to keep abreast of what's going on across their organization moving forward. Um, I am then going to take a look at both of those people's profiles just to remind them that I was there. I'm going to snoop around and see if we've got any mutual connections that I could then maybe use to uh, open up some other doors for the services that I offer as a recruiter Um, see if they maybe went to the same uni, if they grew up in the same town, anything like that anything I can use to perhaps maybe open uh, open other doors as well mm. and then 
Uh, yeah, and that's kind of a process that you might want to use when you're uh, coming out of meetings uh, or, or you're meeting new people for the first time. If you're at a networking event, you meet a new candidate, you meet a new potential client, yeah. um, perhaps we use something like that. Yeah. Where do you move them on to? What do you move them on to then? Because that's that's kind of a lot of people don't always know what to do with this next phase, this next piece, this next piece of engagement. Yeah, so for me, it's for, for me the next piece after that, Dave, is actually you've you've got to that point where you've earned the right to ask them for an offline conversation. So the approach for me there is that once we've added the value, we're, they're in our network, they know who we are, and um, we do something with um, a post-it note and a pen on it, and it would be uh, a little bit of writing on it. It would be held up to the screen saying, "Hi, Dave." Yeah, and we record a video. And then we send that video through to them. And for us, what we'll do is we would use um, a, a pain point that we know that they're having by this, how we overcome it. And then we'll link back to our, a, a customer success story of someone that's in their market. Mm. Um, and then we ask them for an offline conversation. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think one thing that we're doing at the moment and we're seeing significant um, is opening the relationships with the clients a little bit is at the moment recruitment's all about speed it's about pain the pain is i need i always think of recruitment it's what we call um it's one of those services that nobody really wants okay like having your car insured you know yeah it's a painful thing that is a nece it's a necessary evil we, we understand that but clients are in a situation where they need that vacancy fill in fast they don't really care about recruitment. They care about the business and the impact of the pain that the business is going to going to go through. So we've been looking at um, demonstrating how quickly we are filling these very difficult roles. The time from opening from the conversation with the client to closing the actual deal and the candidate starting. Just to explain yep. that for you know one of our recruiters, it's for every nine for every ten CVs that have been sent over, there was eight offers of employment. Okay? That's amazing. It's amazing. Not necessarily all of those people are being accepted because there's counter offers and the businesses industry, people want to keep hold of the good people. But if you're a client, they're responding well to that because they know that you're putting in front of the kind of people they want to employ. Now, as a key metric and as a pain point, as a pain solver, or as, you know, taking away that for the client, that's, to me, that is a way of explaining how we can help you fix your problem. They don't yeah. always know their own issues, the clients. They don't understand the, the impact. They just know the need people. So if you can help with what you're learning from other clients, it's a very useful metric to sort of say, right, okay, it's a 52-day turnaround from start to finish. We, we, know, we have this amount of candidates. We, we, we're interviewing in four days from job brief with the notice period etc and start 52 days 56 days whatever it is and i think those are very very simple measurements as opposed to saying listen guys i i'm in engineering and i can help you fill jobs okay yeah totally e evidence-based content is really really good you know if you've got data to back up the stuff that you're sending through to folk is really really valuable to them yeah um i think as well like this whole the whole thing i mean social selling is the whole chat about it's been been around for for a while now, and it was seen. I remember talking about this a couple of years ago, and it was seen as quite like a buzzword type thing in the recruitment industry. But if anybody listening to this thinks about like when was the last time that you bought something from someone that interrupted your day? Yeah, yeah, it's true. You don't do. You don't, no, not nowadays you don't because you've got the, you can pick and choose who you want to talk to, you know, if your mobile phone rings from someone that you, a number that you don't recognise, most people nowadays just pick it up and silence it. People don't like interruptions nowadays and this type of approach kind of bypasses the interruption, it gets you having warm conversations rather than, than freezing cold calls all the day, all the time. The freezing cold calls just don't convert the same way as someone who already kind of feels like they know you. Happened to me the other day, I was trying to get a hold of someone for um, for a couple of weeks and um, wasn't having much success. And then I sent them a, I sent them a video I talked about earlier on, followed up with some real value to them. Uh, and then the next time I phoned, I got the same gatekeeper and they did the whole, oh, I'll just, I'll see if they're available. I could see they were online on LinkedIn anyway. So I knew they were sat at a computer somewhere uh, and they came back and went, oh, uh, yeah, 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 they'll take your call. Yeah. But, now, previously that person wouldn't have been. Yeah, and that's call. become because you've earned the right. And, and I think that, you know, just quickly looking at you, there must have been a point when you went to Wendy and said, right, Wendy, we're going to have to invest X amount of hours per day in growing either my personal brand or the Firefish brand out there and going out and adding value, adding value. And I don't think there's any coincidence that as a business, you guys have flourished. You wouldn't have flourished. Tech business is not very good at marketing. And we're all in marketing. This is the thing. We're all marketing. We're all yeah. in marketing. We're a marketing company first. And second, we are a recruitment business. We're a tech business. We're an accountancy business. We're a software business, whatever we are. 
And I think that the, you must have dedicated specific time daily to grow your the, the brand. Oh yeah, very much so. And we are I'm actually in a really, really fortunate position because uh, Wendy herself came from a tech background. So she well, she was a recruiter. She came from a technical recruitment background, but really had her finger on the pulse in terms of what was going on in the market. And she attended an event. She went over to Boston to MIT oh, um, wow. to, to an attend an event. And it was um, it was years ago um, before inbound was really on the agenda. Um, and there was a, a someone that gave a talk at the at that event about how inbound marketing and getting people coming to you and yeah. folk trusting you before they engage with you and everything but it's something that was on the agenda and she took that back and started to implement it so the cool thing for us as a team is that if we have any ideas it's like we can go we can position them to to, um, to, to her and she'll listen to them and we can go and try them and one of the things that we've always said as the business has continued to grow that is if we want to try new things go ahead and do it but if you're going to fail just fail fast and learn yeah. from it yeah um, so don't be afraid to try new things. You know, it's like the, the great thing about all the solo uh, solo recruiters listening to this is that their businesses are agile. They have an, they don't have to go through all this red and tape before really they can make a decision. Yeah, no, nobody's really watching in the beginning. So don't be afraid to, to put the content yeah. out there. But equally, like you said, I read an article, and I've probably seen this article numerous times, say that candidates at the moment are looking at 12 pieces of content online before they make a decision to join a company. Now, if you... You, you want to put yourself in between that company and that candidate. Now, they're not going to, as long as one of those pieces of that they're looking at, you are in their, their sphere of whether, whatever platform they're on. As long as you're in there and adding value and that no like trust situation becomes really apparent. And it does make growing your data set easy. It does make that warm call. It does make, listen, who doesn't want candidates ringing, the best candidates on the planet ringing us up saying, I've seen your details online. Oh, that was a great piece you shared. Or, you know, what if you get any roles of this nature, I'd like to you know engage with you, have a conversation. It doesn't happen all the time, but it will not happen. It will not happen. You might have the best product, be the best recruiter, but if you're not actually sharing some valuable content out there, nobody's coming knocking nobody's knocking on your door never and the first time that you get a return from this and you make a placement off of it it's such a eureka moment you know it's like a bloody hell you know there's a, a x amount of fee there for for just um getting myself out there and being as valuable valuable as i can but it's a consistent it's consistency and it's not it's not about quick wins it's about uh, a long, long game term value play, yeah play yeah. the long game yeah so okay so play the long game but what's the starting point okay so let's go back this is where we start okay let's talk it through so right now, you're a solo recruiter. You're in IT, you're in financial services, you're in education, wherever you are. Define who you are. Define the kind of people you want to be talking to. Get a piece of paper, map it out. I am an IT recruiter. I am I am a robotics recruiter. That's where I've specialized in. This yep. is what, and this is the kind of people I want to be targeting or talking to. Okay, what then we go to Buzz Sumo, okay? And we look at, we look at what's you going on. Yeah, you for you could run a search on robotics news, for example, or just the word robotics. That's then going to come back to you with all the top performing uh, content in terms of social engagement round about the robotics sector, and you can filter it on the last month, the last six months, whatever you want, yeah. and then you can then take that, look at the top performing bits of content. Where is that being shared from? Take that blog, put it in Feedly, yeah. or then take that and then go ahead and distribute that onto social media, and then think about your consistent your consistent behaviour. Commit. To commit to doing that one commit to getting one bit of content out on linkedin a day that's not job job focused yeah. um then um so i would do with that commit. yeah i would do that once a day okay so the feed is going to aggregate it so you don't have to go looking for that content that content will regularly drop in every time there's a new article for example every morning you get up yeah. and you first thing you do you pull it up it's got all your top performing blogs that you've, you've like you like and have had value from in the past just listed there you go oh i like that title boom grab it quick check over to make sure that it is uh, in alignment with your with your beliefs and your opinions before you share it yeah, yeah. um and then go ahead at share it out add your add your piece to it add your opinion on what's been written share it out onto the market and what i would do with that is every day for a week five days get into the habits and at the end on the friday i would look at the best performing engagement the most likes the most comments or the most views or whichever that now is the one piece the week after i'm going to email my candidates saying 
I've been looking, been working heavily in your space at the moment. This is something that's coming really popular, really interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts. Take a look. Okay. So, and if you do that once a week, and then obviously you, you, you're, you're giving yourself the five days, you're learning which works best for you, which is the best performing. Week two, you send it out. Maybe then you do an email to your candidates on that nature once every fortnight or once a month, or you summarize or, you know, but if you're saying to them, I'm really involved in this sort of space at the moment, these are the top five performing articles, top four performing articles each year, each, sorry, each month. Yeah. I'd love to know which one, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts on either or or all of them. Okay. Yeah. Dead easy content. Dead easy. And then when you're thinking about trying to get involved in the, you're going to try and get involved in five conversations a day as well. Okay. Right. So if you're thinking about that, one of the things that you could do is you can jump on to a uh, LinkedIn, you can run a search on the word, for example, um, robotics, right. and then you can go into the content tab and rather than searching on, um, so a lot of people when they're doing it, they'll be searching for companies, people, uh, people, jobs, that type of thing, actually run the search against content and you're going to get a live feed of all of the conversations that are going on about oh, really? uh, the word robotics at the moment from a content perspective. I've never seen that. That's really interesting. You, you learn something new every day. Yeah, so if you jump up into the search, bar yeah. type the word robotics and then below it you'll see you've got people etc click content and then you'll start to see all of the stuff that's uh, talking about robotics there and then they're the type of people that you're looking to engage with so i've just found someone who's the ceo of a company called cheddar called john steinberg he's just posted something out about robotics there for me that's someone that i'd be going and getting involved in a discussion with if i was recruiting in the robotics sector yeah and uh, like for example with mine we see lots of um because it's a real kind of video they're showing all the automation the food the, the robotics is super super exciting and kind of sexy in some instances yeah, yeah. And they've got loads of little youtube videos that are people that the companies are sharing and just get involved in that conversation and get involved in that conversation people just visibility so there you go so straight away the social selling and so far we've not done one bit of selling okay none of this it's a kind of a, a it's an oxymoron it's not really doing what we're supposed to what we're saying is so good sumo article a day add your spin on it share it once a week, look at the best performing, prepare that for the week the week afterwards and slowly start building that into it. Every day, go into the content, look at a tab, look at the uh, a sector that you're specializing, get involved in that conversation, share that conversation, maybe even tag the original people and suddenly you will see that sort of uh, visibility and uh, awareness grow. Yeah, totally. And the goal here is to maximize visibility and value before the ask. Yeah. Yeah before the ask. Yeah. So maximize visibility and value with these people before you ask them for anything. When it then comes to the point to ask them for something, the, the chances of them saying yes are far, far higher if you've been visible and valuable to them prior to that. Now, I know there's a lot of people, we kind of wrap this up, I know there's a lot of people out there that love, or, you either love or hate you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, but he wrote a book called Jab, Jab, Right Hook. And that's the point. You give, give without expectation, give, give without expectation, give, give. And then there becomes a time when you ask. But you've got to set up, you've got to set up the right hook with a couple of jabs. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So if you want to uh, have a couple of knockouts, yep. you need a few jabs. That's it. Um, and I think, you know, it's it's not difficult, okay, to do this. It's just it's just about get get started. If yeah. you're listening to this and you've not done it, just get started. Give it two weeks. You know, see what happens. If you open up any doors for any new conversations that you wouldn't have had access to before, it's totally worth it. It's been yeah, worth it. Yeah. I actually, I, um, I've actually got written down here. Just start. Start today. Don't think about it. Go right now. As soon as you hang up, as soon as you stop watching, as soon as you stop listening, go there and have a look. And I'm I'm gonna I can't wait. I'm gonna see what's going on from a robotic side of things. But I'm gonna go you go straight there, have a look at it and start today. Whatever day it is, it's not too soon. Do it now and you and test it. Because yeah. that's all it is. Everyone's testing, and I'm sure you'll pay dividends. And the three things I would say just to perhaps to wrap up on this are that um Frontline front line content causes emotion, which causes motion. Content create credib creates credibility and visibility versus just likability. And your buyer, your candidates and clients will engage with individuals, not brands. Right. Now, I'm sorry to say this. I kind of thought this sounds flipping wonderful, but then I want to go, right, I really want to listen to what you've just said. Can we tell me again what that what those three points again? Frontline content causes emotion, which uh, causes emotion, which causes motion. 
content creates credibility and visibility versus just likability and buyers engage with individuals not brands there you go do you you just like to get a BAFTA now I'm waiting for it, Dave. Oh, Please send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also, so I, I'm going to add my little piece of it. Somebody once said to me, authority is rarely earned, it's usually claimed. So just go and claim your authority. Brilliant. Love it. Cameron, been Legend. it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for taking time out of the day to talk to us. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. It's been super, super inspiring. Good man. I really enjoyed being on as a guest, Dave. Loving what you're doing. Loving the Slack channel you've got set up as well. All the stuff you're putting out to the market is fantastic. So keep up the good work. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'll see you soon, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.